What is happening? It is Thursday night again. It's May 14th and welcome to episode 20 of the Thursday Night Grind where every week I sharpen something on the bench at the American Edge which is my side hustle knife sharpening business and uh, it's my way of sharing with you all of the different ways there are to sharpen things and today is no exception. We're going to be getting into a machete and before I dive into showing you exactly how I'm doing it Today, which uh, I've said before, uh, I have continued, I've clearly evolved my sharpening skill over time, and I still am. So if you check in later, I might not sharpen a machete this way. In fact, I think I have a video on the YouTubes of me sharpening a machete on the Edge Pro. So it can be done. Um, I don't know how much I edited that video, but it takes some, it takes some time. The options are, because here's the thing, right? It's really hard to get an edge on a, a machete, especially one that's been used if it's chipped out or anything. So if you're doing that on the Edge Pro, you're going to be doing a lot of sawing. So I've evolved that, and I'm not using the Edge Pro for this today. Uh, but before I dive into showing you exactly how I am going to do this, I wanted to talk to you about some options that I could think of if you have a sharpening business and somebody asks you, could you sharpen machetes? Before jumping to no, here are some things you could do. Uh, I already stated the Edge Pro, the 1x30. You could work through some grits on the 1x30 and probably come out with a, a pretty nice edge. Um, the Tormac, if you have a Tormac, I, what I've seen uh, some people do before is put a mark uh, on the wheel so that they know if they hold their blade flat like on the bench and then bring it up to the wheel at that location they get the angle that they want and that allow that's a good way of uh, getting repetition you could use the, the the coarse stone grater to build your edge and then use this fine stone grater to refine that edge and then you could even run it, run it over the leather hone so I think that would be a, that'd be a pretty sweet way to do it Dare I say the bench grinder? Oh man, I don't know. I've seen a lot of stuff get destroyed on a bench grinder and uh, some of that keeps me in business. So I don't know. I probably, I, man, I'm just real hesitant to take to the belt, uh, to the bench grinder uh, with the exception of the twice as sharp, which is essentially a bench grinder, but it has a jig and you could come up with a way, I think, to get this in the jig and, um, and do it on there. You need the long arm. You've seen some of my toys to sharp videos. You got to have the long arm in order to get all that reach across the stone. And then it might get weird around it curves, but I'll use that as an opportunity to show you this. This one is actually not sharpened out to the tip. It's the first one that I've seen like that. Usually the edge does go all the way out to the tip. It makes sense based on the application of the tool that it doesn't. And uh, it doesn't have a point, you know, it's, the, the it's not a sharp pointy tip here so I will do what I can to kind of match the taper of that edge as I show you how I do it um, oh the one other one was um, you've, if you've watched my mower blade video I have a, a, a flap disc on an angle grinder you could mount this in a in a vise and take some passes with that I, I have a, I recommend not as coarse of a flap disc as I have in mind, but I think you could, um, I mean, you could definitely get an edge. The problem would be refining it to something really nice. And there's probably others. So let that be the question of the day. Leave in the comments below, how do you sharpen your machetes? And I'm going to show you right now how I sharpen mine. The first thing I'm going to do is go over to the 1x30 and I'm going to cut, cut, like cut an edge on it. Like there's nothing on it right now. It's effectively blunt. So it needs some work. So let's go over there. And I've, I'm trying something new this time where I've moved my 1x30 out uh, so that you get this angle. And let me see what happens when I turn the light on. Hopefully that doesn't destroy you your lighting. I'll bring you right in. Maybe move you around that light post. I don't know. Leave a comment too. What would make this a better view for you? But anyway, here's the here's the idea. Cut it. I'm gonna cut my bevel right there. Let me bring you around here, maybe. 
I see that light post is right in your field of view. Yeah, maybe that's not too bad. The, the point of view shots are nice if you're trying to duplicate it, but this might be all right if you uh, are just, you know, want to get see me take a few passes. So without further ado, let's, uh, this is the, the point of the video where I need to caution that like this mic that I have does do an okay job at filtering out the sound, but it does get loud. So this might be a good time to turn down whatever device you are listening on. Check my angle. Something like that. Out of my yeah, that's pretty good. All right, but it is freehand, right? And I didn't tell you, I put a new uh, 120 grit belt on here. Uh, and I share that because I'm, I want the cutting power of the 120. And you may notice the new belts, uh, they got some bite when they first, when they first cut. So be careful about that. Good. Doing what I can to keep that angle the same. I'm looking at the edge here. I can see some bright spots, but I can tell I'm getting closer. Okay, I got starting to get an edge on some of this. See, I got a little shallow. I can tell my hand got a little shallow on that pound. But I'm getting an edge. A couple more. More on this side. Checking for a bird. I don't have it the whole way yet. Oh, here, I see a bright spot. And it's gone. Check this side one more time. A little bit right here. Touch that, and I see the burr curling up, so we're good. Okay, let's move back here.
doing that reminded me of something, uh, and this was something that came up. John, I was talking to John a little bit today, but or this week. Um, if you're having a hard time building a burr with the Edge Pro, what you will find yourself doing, if you haven't figured it out yet, is just continuing to increase the angle until you start cutting the edge. Um, and that's why I, I've totally been there. If you had one of these and all you had was the Edge Pro, you could do that. You could put a, a steep angle on it. Um, and you know, I wouldn't be too worried about it either because the application is really, really the striking. Uh, so a steeper angle, I think, would be fine. You want that durability. Uh, but anyway, I think I, I decided, I just did one the other day and I did it at uh, 25, 26, 27. I did it at 28 degrees. So I'm going to duplicate that. Uh, I don't, there's another great question of the day. Number two, what angle do you put on your machetes for your bevels? Oh, and here's how I'm going to do it. Oh, let me, uh, I got to turn on this other light, which may be tough on you as well. All right, and this is the, again, this is the work sharp with the blade grinding attachment. This is the, um, like I said before, like this is either, okay, this is their, I'm gonna start on their extra course belt and then work through a few of them. So uh, again, I'm doing this one at 28 degrees, which is a setting you, you do right over here. And that is, uh, the angle of this relative to this. So here we go. Turn it down a little bit. So for the uh, for the coarse grits, generally speaking, low speed, and I guess dare I say high pressure. For the finer grits, the general practice is more speed with less pressure. So let's just uh, take a look at this and uh, see how this cuts. Yeah, I can see the, the burr coming up as I go down. So I know I'm at the edge. It's one pass on that side. See the burr coming up on here. So that's good. Just mention again here, like that nobody, uh, nobody that I know has ever worried about the uh, air quality using this workshop tool. I'm not gonna sweat it too much today, but if you're getting into one, I would not ignore that. It's not stuff you want to be breathing. So some options you have are. Uh, a mask, dust collection. All right, pretty healthy burr on, on all sides there. Move my way up. This must be the coarse belt. Little tap just to uh, get it to track right. All right, here we go. Couple passes on either side. One thing I really like about WorkSharp is uh, <laughs> in the packaging they have like the first note is since you know you're not going to read the manual, at least know this. And I forget I forget what it was, but I just love their uh, awareness of how so many people operate. I bring that up because in the manual they have a suggested number of passes based on grit. I am not adhering to, obviously. Still putting a pretty mighty burr on there, so we'll, we'll, we'll see how this goes. That's another thing I'm not super amped about with this that I love about the Edge Pro is that I have a lot of control over my push, my edge leading or edge trailing stroke. Let's move this up a little bit in speed.
I don't have the same visibility of that bird coming back and forth. But let's uh, let's just see. Oh. All right, now let's cut cut it off. Back a bit. For the people that uh, really get excited about types of grinds, I'm not one of them, but I think you'll find that many of them would say that the convex grind, which is what we're doing here, not a hollow grind, not a flat grind, but the convex grind would be most suitable for this application. And this is the strongest edge. Uh, like I said, I don't worry a whole lot about that. Because I probably need to do a study of like putting a flat grind and a hollow grind and a convex grind on a blade and then um, seeing what happens after testing it. If you have seen a such study, I would be happy to see that. Ooh, hey, how about this? Plug for Knife Steel Nerd. That would be a good one. He's a he's a self-proclaimed nerd and his articles are very nerdy, but he would be the type that would do a very good study on uh, the impact of different grinds. So go check him out and uh, if we all ask him for uh, that, a study like that, maybe he'll do it. Alright, last bell. Let's spin it up even more. The other way. Tiny. All right, he's checking it. I mean, that that is. That's all right. I certainly wouldn't slide my finger across there. I mean, of, with any force. Got a nice, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that or not, but there is a nice shine. There's two grinds here. There is a flat grind. Oh, there you go. You get that nice shine right at the, uh, I mean, the belts on this workshop do a nice job. I, I'm not disappointed in their quality. Okay. But anyway, I mean, that's good. So that is so much better than uh, the way I was doing it before. Oh, and I wanted to uh, just plug this too, as you know, this is part of the business. Uh, what I do is just measure it. That's a $17 job. Okay, so make sure that if you got value out of this, or if you're going to use any of this in your business, or if you're even going to consider starting a business, um, that you hit the subscribe button because every Thursday night I come online and do this and uh, hit the like button for me. That just helps me. It's a, just a button click for you, but it's a big help for me to tell the, the algorithm of the YouTubes that this is valuable content. And make sure that you answer the questions of the day and I will see you next week. Thank you so much.